In this last of the three videos, I did want to show you a few more examples of components and also show you how you can import components from McMaster Car. Uh, so let's take a look at some other types of joints. Um, we've got a, a different one here that has a has three components. It's got a base and then it's got a shaft that is fixed with a rigid joint to the base. And then it's got an arm that is able to um, revolve or spin around that uh, ax the axle. So that um, the the hole that's in this long pink arm is slightly larger than the uh, salmon colored shaft and that's how we can expect it to sort of spin in here freely if we were to 3D print this or manufacture it somehow. Uh, I added joint limits to this one so that it only goes as far as it can go and that's something that I sh I've shown you already and that can help in trying to visualize how this would be in real life. Another example that I showed before is this Geneva wheel mechanism. Uh, it's an interesting mechanism. I think I have a separate video describing this, but the important thing to know here is that it's uh, two, it's just simply two joints. One is allowing the uh, orange wheel to revolve around this peg, and the other joint allows the green wheel to revolve around that peg. An interesting uh, experiment to see how you're doing in your understanding of joints is a pantograph. There's a separate video on this, and again, it's just a bunch of revolute joints, and by adding some limits to those joints, we can have a pretty realistic representation of how this pantograph would work in real life. I created a kind of simplified version of a fidget spinner here, and if we look at a section analysis of it, you can see that there are three components. There's uh, this cap, which makes it so that you're not staring at a bearing. Uh, there's the outer part that you would spin, and then there's the bearing in the middle. And so the way a bearing works is that the inside, the inner ring, rolls independently of the outer ring. So in a case like this, we actually want to force that bearing into this uh, blue plastic part so it's rigidly stuck there. And I could create a rigid joint between... Um, in fact, I think I have created a rigid joint between the uh, bearing and this outer surface, and that, that explains uh, how those would be connected. There's a bit of a chamfer here so that we could actually drive this in, and there's a ledge on the bottom to make sure that the uh, bearing doesn't go any further than it's supposed to. Now, the third component here is this cap, which hides the bearing, and uh, in this case, you know, we're not able to really... Uh, or I haven't tried to really articulate the independent movement between this part of the uh, bearing and this one. The important part here is that I want to show you how you can add components from the McMaster car catalog. So that bearing is actually a ready-made part that came from a catalog. And if we remove the section analysis, you can see it actually contains all of the ball bearings. And this is something that you could actually buy. The component name is automatically defined as the uh, part number from this company called McMaster Car. So I will copy that to the clipboard and show you how you can create that uh, component in a new design. So let's say we're in a totally new design and we want to insert a component from McMaster Car. This is essentially a simplified version of their catalog, and you can choose pretty much anything. Not every part in here has a 3D uh, model associated with it, but let's look at the nuts category. Let's look at hex nuts and just choose a type, maybe a size. And once we get down to a part number, we can click that part number, and uh, if it has a little CAD icon here near it, then it's something we can import into Fusion 360. We click on Product Detail, and then scroll down until we see this little drop-down, and make sure it says 3D Step. It probably won't by default. So th as long as it says 3D Step, we can hit Save, and it will import that into Fusion 360 with the McMaster Car part number right there. So uh, that's how I got that bearing in from the in the other one. If you have some uh, design that incorporates movement, a bearing is a great thing to be able to just drop in here and then start modeling around it. And I think the fidget spinner is a good example of that. Everything starts with that bearing and all of the 3D modeling happens around it. Now, the last thing I want to show you is this simple kind of um, design for something that has a hand crank. And uh, I'm going to go through the whole process of how you might make this 
really quickly in a final video and then I'll ask you to go and try and create it yourself and um, that'll be in the next short video.